Yes. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Photo Antics. Uh, my name is Alex Robinson. I'm the director here. And I would just like to start by acknowledging that we are on the unceded lands of the Ngunnawal. And I would like to pay my respects to all First Nations elders, past, present, and emerging, and acknowledge their ongoing connections to the lands and the waters of this beautiful place and this beautiful garden that we're in that we don't use enough. So we need to do more events next year in the garden. Woo. Yeah. And we've got Osco funding. Woo. <laughs> um, from 2025 onwards. Um, so today we are all here for the book launch of Wilder's new book, which is Nucleo, which is available for sale there. He also has a few prints for sale. So thank you everyone for coming along. Uh, we're just going to have a short like, little conversation and Anio here from the NGA is going to officially launch the book and Maya, just have a quick Maya. discussion with Wilder and um, yeah, if you have any questions, you can ask Wilder afterwards. Thank you. Okay, thank you everyone. And here's Annie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I asked Penny to push the camera over for me, but she doesn't seem to. You, anybody within reach can do it. It's fine. Okay. Hi, everyone. It's a real treat to be here tonight. He thinks Alex is walking the way. It's fine. Yeah. Mm. Good. Good. Where's your microphone? I think the battery slide will just. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to get that out of my hands. Good luck with that. Uh, it's a real privilege to, to launch a book. I think. You know, every time you come to open a show or launch a book, you just have that incredible weight, that sense that there's been so much work and thought and angst and effort put into the endeavour. And maybe even more with the book. I just know when you have to collaborate with people, you said you really enjoy it. I find that difficult to believe. <laughs> I, you know, you've, you know the, you've got to give over some of your control and you've got a designer telling you what to do. And... It just, it just I mean, it is a great thing and it's part of your practice to, to sort of give up that control and collaborate and see what other people can bring to it and the, the fact that often in your own practice you talk about the fact that, um, I love the fact that you use the word inauthentic, that if you make it seem too perfect, it's an inauthentic thing. I think there is a deep um, vein of authenticity and honesty that runs through your work. So I do like the fact that you do bring um, accident and so on into, into the practice. Let's just talk about, maybe I'll get to get some basics down because I'll just wrap it on. Um, this is the third book that you've done. You self-published Safe in 2019. You're really on a roll, holy moly. And then um, Death Is Not Here in 2022. Wildly successful book. You can't get it for love or money. Wilder apparently has some under the bed. <laughs> but, you know, incredible, really successful book, followed by, I think a book, you know, I, I had the great privilege of sitting down with Wilder yesterday afternoon and going, yeah, sorry, a few days ago, and going through the book. And I just got that real feeling um, that I should have maybe done that a lot earlier because I think it's a book that as you live with the book and as you continue to live with it and experience it anew each time you open it up, that, it, that more and more things are going to be revealed. And I do remember where out of the very... F I will give the f microphone to you at some point, maybe. Um, the very first time I, I should have encountered it much earlier, but I'm a bit vague at times. And I first encountered Wilder's um, work when I was judging the National Portrait Gallery Portrait Prize in 2019, just before everything went completely bonkers and fell apart. And it was this incredible um, image of his... Um, partner, his wife, Celia, who's at the back, with Laura, um, in, um, Celia, in, in, back in Belgium, from where, where you're from, in a watchtower. And I have to admit, you know, portraiture is funny things, and when you do prizes, there's all these sort of like little political things that come in and so on. But I have to be completely honest, it probably was my favourite image in the whole thing. This really intriguing image. Celia's found a watchtower off. She's gone, probably got sick of where you know. I'll go scout into the watchtower for a bit. And you just sort of see this little slit and just the top of um, Celia's head. But it's complex and it's it's at night, of course. And it's um, uh, 
it's it's it was just a really intriguing and an image that's really stayed with me. I even remember where it was on the wall. So I think there's that sense. Um, I just thought I didn't realise you were going to be up here with me, so I just feel prepared. So I haven't really got questions, so I'm going to have to sort of start asking the things I was going to say. Um, I can ask you maybe. Do you want to talk a little bit about your board that you made when you were 11 with all the things on it that were going to just keep being showing up in a book yeah. like some <coughs> many years later? Yeah, yeah. I think you've got a microphone. Well, oh, thank you. Um, yeah, uh, how do you even know about that? <laughs> I know everything. Um, yeah, I don't I know, was, like... Yeah, once I was there, um, living in Belgium at the time, the next village. Really <laughs> no, when I was, like, lots of the... the um, lots of my work that I've so been... that I've been doing uh, really feels like this continuous um, trajectory from when I was, like, say, 10 years old. Um, when I, because I went to like this art school, like the art classes outside of the in the weekend, and that was like my sort of my happy place compared to school. And uh, at some point, I we had to like make like a like a game board with like a little illustration every every frame. And for some reason, like the stuff that I drew in that specific game board, this little eleven-year-old kid, um, themes that sort of started that were like depicted in these little frames are things that I sort of carried through uh, all this time still till today really and like the cover of the the book that uh, structure actually was also like a little illustration in that um, in that book so in a way it feels like I'm just repeating myself uh, at infinitum but that sort of feels like um there's something that is continue that. Yeah, you really... had little, little drawings of fires yeah, and yeah. darkness and dreams and ghosts. It just yeah. It's funny, I guess we do come out fairly fully formed really and then you just keep sort of, because I was looking at through like the safe, your safe book was sort of about um, family and place and so on. I guess the work is, you know, all those, all those things were there but your experience of um, of coming to Australia in 2008 and then you, there was another work called Home Home in 2015 yeah, yeah. where I think you I think the work this book is really mining really complicated and not easily answered questions about where we are in the world how we inhabit this land it's a difficult place to to live on um, and you said that one of the catalysts for the books was um, time that you spent with an Ngunnawal elder and he was talking about the fact that 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 land can sort of look after us, which is just as well because we're not very good at looking after the land. Mm -hmm. So the, the fact that it can embrace us back and, and be there for us in a very profound and deep way. But I guess our experience and your experience of migration and, you know, you sort of, in that, in that work in 2015, you sort of felt that Belgium was starting to not feel like home and yet you're always going to have an experience out here of living in your nuclear family. That's the show the work is sort of about. You sort of talked about this being a family album. That, and, and there's a great sense of um, isolation, I think, that sort of is profoundly through the work. Um, which, you know, which I, th I love the fact that you don't have any easy answers for that. You know, you're, you know, you're a very beloved and important part of this community, the photo access community. But that we all do sort of keep, I think there's that sense that you maybe have of, um, and I'll speak for you even you're sitting right here, of, <laughs> of you know, of, um, of being separate and, and how do we belong. And, and I think they're very profound questions that we all ask. I love that sense that you sort of talk about the fact that we try to make stories and sense and, you know, you, and a lot of people in books have like a, a narrative to sort of, you know, that explains everything, but that in fact life seems random to you, I think, and chaotic, mm. and you want to keep that sense mm. in the work. Yeah, I, I don't know what to say, that, but that's, that's, that is correct. Like, I mean, I've just been like that game board, um, I've often feel like I've experienced life as this, a series of, um, events that are only interconnected by the fact that we are the ones experiencing them so it's like little scene this happens this happens and like mm. there is seemingly no connection other than like our sort of consciousness that sort of ties it all together mm. but they're, they're all like human experiences that that are very much in common with with everyone like i mean having a having a being a white 
middle-aged man. <laughs> like having a family, like all these things are very common and, and normal. And he's shared. talked to me about this al this book being like a family album, um, because I think we all know that great work comes out of work that we do when we're really passionate and really connected and really it's about something that's really important to us. It I mean, gives us the drive, I guess. Otherwise, it's a bit academic. So it comes out of that deep place, but then I think you're very concerned about work becoming too easy and too too sort of easily talked about in a very sort of linear way or something, so that you bring all these things into the work, you know, using exhausted stock and accidents and, and the way that you use the flash and so on. You said it was like a neutralising thing. Do you want to talk a bit like about the fact that what what a photo can give you, and where you try to sort of um, um, because you know I think it's in, it's interesting to me too. You sort of talked about photo. You were a painter. You went to Ghent, which I guess has a, a history, a very deep history that's like weighing you down. Flemish master, you know, you know, right back to the Flemish masterpieces Absolutely. and so on. And maybe talk, maybe you could talk a bit um, later about what photo gives you that painting didn't give you. Uh, I think it was just the, the speed initially, like the, just to produce something that was <laughs> very, <laughs> very just lazy. Um, but yeah, like I mean, yeah, yeah, of course. But it's, um, but yeah, the, the studying painting in a city like Gant is it is very humbling, and it it really puts you down because you can like literally go look at Agnus Dei painted by Van Ark, Van Ark Brothers, and it's like okay, I will well, never be, I will never even be able to paint this little patch of grass on that. <laughs> so I mean that's still what I feel. I mean with my photos as well. I just like it's it's all like little things that I try. It's just throwing stuff at the wall and see what sticks. But um, but you mentioned the flash, and I think that's a that's a quite a big thing for me. And I think as much as I try to be aware of my own bias and and like um, repetitions of stylistic elements, like the flash is something I, that has, it's quite intrinsically connected to my practice because it's like for me it's. I throw that word forensic around quite a lot, and like I feel like using that element of flash is like I almost like remove. It's like a self-effacing kind of thing. Like it's I might be casting a shadow or something, or like where I might have, have bias towards this object in a composition, and it's like flash is like boom, this gets rid of everything, and like everything, every element in the picture is as important as the other elements. I think that's a, that's yeah. a very important thing for me. Like. Absolutely, it's really deep in the book, isn't it? I love the the sort of that 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 um, that such deeply photographic nature of your work because that's right back at the beginning of photography and what it is is it's just light passing through a lens onto a substrate of some sort of negative or a paper or something, and it, it doesn't differentiate anything. So I think it is yeah, it's very deep, isn't it, about what. Um, about that that experimentation, that play, that not wanting to have a definitive answer that we all yearn for, I think, in many ways, and which gives you freedom. And then I think, of course, it gives the viewer freedom as well. And I just want to... I know that you worked with this fabulous Paris-based um, publishing company, Area Books. This book is insane. I. I went through it with one and I was always sort of like, you know, you go through, I mean, just you have to get this book. I don't know how many copies he's got. It's Damn. just insanely good. <laughs> Enough. Enough. You sort of go through and you experience it like this and you sort of like peek underneath and see what's going on. And, this, and the colour the colour work is very beautiful too, Wilder. I know you're probably more known for the black and white work, but the, that sort of desaturation and retro look of the colour is really extraordinary. When you go through and you're like sort of like experiencing it, I don't even know, I don't know, I can't even talk about this properly. I might be able to in about like 23 years or something. And then you get to the end and then the whole book is revealed to you in a complete way, completely opens up. I was just like, I was just, I was absolutely discombobulated. I cannot explain, I don't know why. I was so excited, I almost jumped out of my chair. When I started going back, hi Celia, from the dog. <laughs> and you know, it sort of opens up and then you come back and it is about memory, isn't it? Because you 
realised you didn't walk properly and there's bits you remember and images I couldn't remember seeing at all and then images that were sort of like half hidden are suddenly revealed to you. Oh, there's the flora. And it's just, it just is the most, and you come through this expansive sort of colour bit at the back. It doesn't matter, I'm just rubbing it anyway. <laughs> Maybe you should talk. But it is, it is the most, I, as you said, I, I think I asked you, you only know of one other book, some sort of origami book yeah, that yeah. works a little bit similarly. But I just um, take my head off to talk about my designer. What was it like? Did she come up with this idea? It's insane. Yeah, it's, it's so to... good. It's so simple, but mm. it's so profound. It's incredible. I mean, the idea always was from the onset, like you said, like I wanted to make like a family album and I, and I was like, immediately quite conscious about like the pitfalls of that is like oh oh this guy made a photo book about his family and blah blah it's like it becomes this very sort of cringy kind of emotional thing so i like oh it's such a sentimental book well that's you yeah <laughs> but i wanted to make it sort of like awkward in a way like in size that we could at least like try to blow it up in size so to sort of counter that intimate feel of of, of a little family album um and then she, she came up with that idea and like it took well, many conversations also like mine lots of the conversations were in French mm. and, like my French is pretty decent but like lots of technical terms about bookmaking <laughs> like so or like so it took a few uh, a few chats oh, before I could um, understood what she meant with the binding um, but yeah it's like you said I feel like it's a very it, it really engages the the viewer to like sort of have a look through it and then have a look through it again and like lots of the work that I would have never even bothered putting on, on a website or on my Instagram is sort of in there because there's such a quantity of, of, of things in there and it's just nice. For me as, a, as an artist it feels very sort of comforting to have to have this stuff like together in these mm. And it's the last 10 together. years of work yeah. from the yeah. birth of the Felix Correct, yeah. through to almost about a couple of months ago. Yeah, that's right. Extraordinary journey, journey. Yeah. fires, what a surprise. Um, what else was I going to say? I just thought of something. Um, just talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> um, I get those notes. You take no. the book. You get a print. You get a print. Yeah. You get a signed print on the front, yeah. which is beautiful. I'll, I can talk quickly about oh, that. What, 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 um, what that print to them meant to me. Like I mean, it's so. Look, I was in this project with Kirsten. Um, so about sort of finding Western and sort of the the Western catchment and. We were actually at the top of this um, of this Mount Arawang with um, Uncle Wally and uh, Auntie Karen, who were Ninawal elders, and and Wally um, did this beautiful like sort of welcome to country on this side. And um, during the welcome, he like sort of he said that he he talked in Ninawal language and he sort of cast he told like evil evil spirits to like, get off people's backs basically. And, and sort of shouted that into the into the wind, and like I don't know, I'm a pretty sort of <laughs> down to earth kind of person. I like to think of myself, but like I in that moment, I sort of felt actually something lifted off my shoulders in a way, and and then he sort of continued to say that like country sort of looks after everyone who passes through, and like and I had always sort of maybe suspected that, but it's like and I had the reaction like what me as some random Belgian. Belgian dude ending up, why would country like give a crap about me? But the what was interesting is that this sort of this epiphany happened underneath this trick point. And for me that sort of is like the, the archetypal skeleton of a house which I've used in my paintings like twenty years ago. So it's like something sort of like tied back to that conceptually and then that huge rock there, Ninwal people considering themselves sort of rock people, all these sort of elements sort of like click together. And that sort of, we kept going back to that same trick point and I kept photographing like my family underneath it and that sort of, I know it was a beautiful kind of something that I, that the book actually, in these 10 years, the country has been looking after me and my family and I never really realized it until then. And mm. yeah. I like, I do, another thing I was just thinking of was like, I remember what I was gonna say. Um, <laughs> you obviously have a great affinity and love of dirt. Um, <laughs> and you know, like, you know, Death Is Not There was about building that, you know, that big sort of um, void in the backyard yeah. that you and your son so kindly did. 
Um, there's a great backyard here, which is just absolutely hilarious. But I guess there is. I mean, I know you don't talk. You sort of, you know, said your foot. You know, you in a, many senses your references are back to painting mm -hmm. rather than to photography. But I can't help thinking of the great American photographer Robert Adams mm -hmm. and his ability to photograph bits of scrub and dirt and mm -hmm. so on and make something that is incredibly magic. And I guess that's just the tr transformative nature of mm -hmm. photo. Eh? Where you just look at something that's, and I do get that sense. You know, I could be standing next to you photographing the same thing, and mine would be all about me. It wouldn't be as good. But yours is just completely about you and your way of dealing with the world. And I guess that's what a great artist does: is that it, it makes you see the world through your eyes, which is an extraordinary thing. So you said this is like a legacy for your children, which is very beautiful. And I guess in some ways, although it's no way sentimental or anything like what actually happened that day. It is a beautiful record and you know, using that just that straight documentary thing, a photo of of, um, of light coming through a lens and, mm. and in that moment, which will never be repeated, mm. being caught in that moment. And it's a very, very extraordinary thing. So I think you've made a beautiful legacy for your kids. Um, even though, as you said, Felix may be starting to get a bit sick of being photographed all the time by dad. <laughs> But, Not only um, Felix. <laughs> um, I really, I mean, I, I, I feel embarrassed to be talking today because I think I'd like to come back in six months and have this talk again um, because it's a book that is going to keep, is, is very deep, very um, just profoundly about what it's like, your experience, particularly of living on this planet at this time. And yet in other ways, you know, all these photographs are so embedded in time and yet the way that your work resonates it's it's you know like moments that then prof profoundly are transformative and go beyond a particular time and space something very magic mm. not surprising that that mm. first sort of a three grid had mm. ghosts and mm. and dreams mm. in it because there's something that's so embedded in the world and yet so beyond the world maybe it is you get background mm. <laughs> it's a really beautiful achievement and um I'm just in awe of it. I can give you total congratulations. <laughs> Keep going. Make I'll, another I'll one. I'll do my best. That's enough from yeah. us, isn't it? Oh, thank you, you so much, Annie. Did you want to say anything more? Uh, no, it's... No. Look. Let's have a drink. Yeah, let's and have a drink. And celebrate. I just want to say... Yeah. Um, Alex very quickly sort of alluded to it. We, we've been talking too long. We're about to stop. But I just want to say a huge congratulations to Penny, who's here today, and to Sally, who's also on the board. And a lot of people worked really hard, and to Kirsten, who was the, the wonderful director before at Photo Access. We've just heard that we've just got a huge amount of funding from Creative Australia, 400,000 over four years, starting the end of next year. So if you'd like to just donate something on your way out to Photo Access for next year, that would be terrific. <laughs> but an incredible achievement. I think it's, it's you know, really, um, it's just an, an opportunity for this incredible organisation to keep growing with wonderful, wonderful people like Alex and Wouter here. We're in very good hands. And, uh, you know, you're always just just so committed to experimentation and inquiry and growth, and that's exactly what we need. So good luck, you two. It's going to be amazing, and the rest of the team, of course. Everybody else, it's a big team effort. But um, it's a really exciting um, thing to celebrate at Photo Access. So let's have a drink and celebrate your book and the history of, and, you know, the future of Photo Access. Thank you so much, honey. I just want to quickly say, like, I owe so much of my, like, this the outcome of this book to, to this place, really. Like, if I didn't start printing in the dark room and had the opportunity to do that, like, we would not be sitting here today. So I, as being a part of the organization, I just feel like I'm indebted to it, like, yeah, forever, it's like, that, that it's, and it would just not have happened without this place. So, yeah. love it. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah.